Hello and welcome. This is Chuck Shubhiplani, Cisco Network Security Technical Marketing Engineer. And in today's video, I'm going to discuss some of the key points for deploying ASAB cluster in private cloud and demonstrate how to deploy it on VMware. So before we begin, I would like to touch upon why we need clustering. Failover provides high availability, but doesn't provide scalability. Clustering, on the other hand, has both stateful high availability as well as scalability. Let's take a look at some of the key points to understand this feature better. So we are now supporting clustering on version 9.17.1 on VMware and KVM. Cluster interface mode supported is individual mode where traffic is load balanced outside the cluster, which means span mode cannot be implemented. And this feature runs on ASAV 30, 50, and 100. Multiple context is not supported, and this feature adds cluster support over VXLAN, which works via peer discovery and clustering over multiple ESXi hosts is supported as well. Let's take a look at the topology. We've got two PCs inside and outside on left and right of the screen. We've got two load balancers, which are basically routers running OSPF to load balance traffic among ASAV cluster units. And in the center, we have got ASAV cluster units. To explain how load balancing is done, I've included the commands used on my CSR routers, which are acting as load balancers. Since the load balancer routers have identical metrics to reach outside PC, it will balance traffic per packet per destination. I have already added unit A and B as cluster units. And in this demonstration, we'll be adding the third unit or unit C to the cluster. Now let's understand the configuration needed on ASA V unit C to be part of the cluster. First, we need to set up the cluster interface mode as individual. If we are trying to set this up as span, an error will be shown in the CLI. Post that, we need to create an object group which has the IP addresses of the VTEP interfaces, which will have the respective IP of the unit that we are adding into the cluster. Since we are adding the third unit, I have the IP as 53 in the last octet of gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0. We also have a command NV only cluster, which is added so that the interface configuration is not replicated to other units in the cluster. The object group is also associated to network virtualization edge or the NVE. You can see that as a peer group command and the interface is associated as the source interface for the NVE. And this NVE is then associated to the VNI interface which is used as a cluster interface in the cluster group configuration. I wanted to share the full configuration of unit A as well for reference. The only part missing here is the OSPF configuration, which was seen in the topology diagram. Now let's dive into the demo. I will go ahead and add day zero configuration for unit C. Since this is unit three, we'll be adding the IP address as 6.6.6.53.
we have successfully replicated the configuration from master. I have now logged in via SSH to unit A of the cluster. Let's have a look at some of the show commands. Let's have a look at the connection table. At this point of time, there is currently no traffic passing through the cluster. Let me go ahead and initiate an SSH session from the inside PC to the outside PC. A successful SSH session was done. Let's have a look at the connection table. From the flags, I'm able to see that the connection is currently with unit A. As we can see, the connection is made from the inside towards the outside on port number 22. And we have inbound and outbound data. Let me go ahead and kick out this unit from the cluster. Let me initiate some more traffic from the Ubuntu machine. And we can see the connection has been successfully passed on from unit A to unit C. I will go ahead and join unit A back into the cluster. Unit A is back in cluster. This concludes this session. I hope this has been informative and I would like to thank you for viewing it.